especially poetry, which he read deeply, and he memorized vast tracts. Uh, he could re recite all of the leaves, of the, the leaves of grass, which is quite a vast poem. Okay. Uh, met Walt Whitman in 1877 and produced um, a biography of the man. The thing which is important to us is that while he was 35 and in London, um, coming home one night from a poetry reading in a handsome cab, he had what was consider he considered to be a mystical uh, illumination. It so moved him, and we'll come across discussions about this in a moment, it so moved him that for the rest of his life he tried to work out what had happened, what was really going on when this was, from his psychological point of view, as well as from a mystical point of view, and literally what this meant for a human being to have this oceanic feeling of being at one with everything. Okay? So, quite a guy. Quite a guy. He died, uh, again, after a night of um, meeting with a uh, poetry reading with his friends. Um, they left. He uh, said to his wife he was going out on the veranda for a, a turn, a very cold night, and he slipped and banged his head and died literally in an accident a year before his book was published. So it's rather sad, he was uh, 64 when he died. So that's um, quite a life though, quite a life. <coughs> right, now, this bit is drawn from the, the uh, email that you might have already got. And I uh, see um, at least one person has printed out. So um, you can follow this with me. I'm just going to read the, the second part. Cosmic consciousness was drawn from an extraordinary experience he underwent at the age of 35. This proved so profound to him that he spent the remainder of his life studying the phenomenon, and hence with a more evidence-based attitude opened a new pathway to a more practical and scientific approach to the understanding of the mystical. Now, this is true. It is evidence-based. Nowadays, I think we'd say he is more anecdotal than he should be to be a proper scientific approach. He's bringing in opinion and he's bringing in um, ideas which at the time would have been considered valid but nowadays would be argued and haggled about um, and nitpicked with. So in that sense I'm not endorsing him for being a scientist but rather for the broad sweep of his philosophy and the way he actually gathered things together and suggested and, and looked for sort of um, similarities in nature, etc., to try and explain what was going on with this particularly illuminated, this enlightenment experience, which he did, which he'd actually been through himself. So he's on the inside, if you like, looking back. Book presents cosmic consciousness, which was his term, as the third stage of a threefold evolutionary process evolutionary process that the human race is going through. Uh, an evolutionary process of rising levels of awareness manifesting on the life forms of the planet, the third cosmic level occurring seldom but with steadily increasing frequency. Now what that meant was what he saw when he looked back was an awful lot of people that had similar mystical, no sorry, not an awful lot of it, but a, a certain number of people that had mystical experience like he's talking about from a wide variety of backgrounds. He found it in literature, he found it in history books, and what he was actually sort of struck by was the fact that this is something which is sort of emerging in the human race. There are fewer the further back we go, and there is, it's starting to it seem to him to be increasing with frequency. He still says, in one of the points I think we we'll read a bit later on, we're still talking about a small group of people, enough that we could be held within a large dining room. So we're not talking about a vast number, but in his, to his mind, it was increasing. And he goes through the sequences, and it was important to him. His scientific bent was that actually, if you codify them and put them on a timeline, you see that they're getting more and more prevalent. Now, to be thoroughly scientific, you'd have to say, well, probably that is because we're recording more of them. But the, the sweep that he gives it is that this is an evolutionary thing. This is a movement which is happening. And from his experience of it, it was a shift in consciousness. And that's an important sort of thing to place on it. What had changed was something that actually uplifted 
him in that experience, and when he looked back, other people had had this type of experience. Nowadays, we we have a bit more sort of uh, information and more and more um, research and literature about this, so we we can understand that what he was saying fits in very very clearly with other esoteric approaches to this type of uh, experience, particularly with the Zen thing. You know, what he's talking about, and that would be a sartori, a little mm. ripple of this vast awareness, which is possible for human beings to reach. But he's not saying that you have to have a discipline and work towards it. He's not saying that in any sense that that, that, that actually helps. What he's saying is just look at the way it seems to be occurring. Okay? <clears throat> this cosmic level occurring seldom but with steadily increasing frequency. More and more of them as we get further and further on in history. Which includes, so he's talking about three levels of consciousness here. Simple consciousness of animals, awareness at the basis level of existence, and their interaction with their environment. So consciousness, first of all, is an interaction of animals with their environment. And it's really like a recording device. Information comes in and gets stored inside of it. So he's saying that uh, you have inert matter, then you have organisms, some of which are able to record their <laughs> environment. They're aware of what's going on around them. They interact with it in a way. The next stage up is what we would call, and that would do that with the, he, 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 first of all, says that that's sort of what we find in the animal kingdom, this simple consciousness of animals. Then when you come to humans, you have a level of self-consciousness which occurs in human beings. And he, he, he's aware enough to notice that it's a social type phenomenon. It, it occurs, it's linked in with language and it's linked in with interaction between people, but we're talking about the developed individual consciousness of, of humanity, an awareness of existence with purpose. The sense of a self as a center of that awareness and representing itself in forms such as art, literature, and music. And not all of us have it. <coughs> and it started to appear historically at a certain time in, 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 in the world in human beings. And what he's saying, it's an evolutionary thing. We become more and more aware, and we become more and more conscious in this self-conscious way. And it is something to be achieved. And we can see it coming through an individual human being's progress, from childhood through to adulthood. We can actually be aware of this, of this progress. And that's the second level of consciousness, which is a, a well-worth-attaining thing in a human being. And it's quite an achievement in itself. And it's a remarkable step beyond the simple consciousness that you find in animals. Okay? We'll, we'll come across more about this when, when we go on a bit. But I'm just laying down the, the, the groundwork as he does in the beginning of the book. And then above that is the cosmic consciousness, which is an awareness of the level of the divine, or the next stage of human evolution, incorporating all aspects of unity and love. He considered it to be a moral level of consciousness and that whereas people become aware of interaction at a, at a love basis then this feedback between them is what is what it is this this cosmic consciousness breaking through or lifting them into that situation okay does that make sense as a as a broad sweep yeah okay. right so on to your song sheets now <laughs> just to define them a little bit more um, the first paragraph and these are all quotes which are, are, are taken from this book this is the first time I think I've done a talk where all the quotes come from the one book um, and quite frankly there's so much in the book it's difficult to get it down into, into one talk um, I am recommending that you get it I think it's a book that you'll probably if you do buy, you'll keep <coughs> and you'll dip into it not because it's right, I disagree with him on so many points, but I'm really grateful for the fact that he, you know, he raises the arguments in the first place. It's fascinating, it's a fascinating book. It's a fascinating book, yeah. yeah. And uh, you'll argue cases with him, you'll think, oh, that fellow hasn't got cosmic consciousness, you're not talking. But the very fact that he brings them up and brings you into, it brings it into this argumentative sort of arena, where you find yourself actually saying, well, uh, no, he is right. The, the, the use of language is different and it's, it's, and it's strange and it's not what you didn't actually think, but...